We would like, therefore, to welcome them. Um, as we do, can I remind you that you will be asked, um, when you uh, ask your questions, uh, to keep them brief. Um, we will, of course, do our best to ensure um, that all questions are answered, but we cannot guarantee it. Um, please join me in welcoming you to the next panel. Tonight, we have four parliamentary candidates for tonight's hustings. Daniel Zaisha representing the Labour Party, Ripu Preet from the Green Party, Chamani Fernando from the Conservatives, and Julian Herbert from the Liberal Democrat Party. And regarding the structure of this debate, we'll start with three minutes introductions from each of the candidates, then questions from both Matteo and me, which will concentrate on the European, national, and local level, and then questions from the floor. The questions from the floor will be about 45 minutes. So I would now like to ask candidates starting from the left to introduce themselves, please. Well, hello and thank you. I'm Daniel Zeichner. I'm the Labour candidate. Um, I'm looking slightly breathless. It's because an hour ago I was standing on the terraces at Cambridge United for their last game. And um, I have two questions in life, really, in Cambridge, I guess. One is the football, and the other one is Kettle's Yard, the concerts they have on Thursday night. And this beautiful room is where the Kettle's Yard concerts will be moving when that place is shut for renovation. So this is my, my twin passion. You'll be glad to know Cambridge United finished the season on a high. Now, I'm going to ask you, you'll guess that um, from my name that I've got European connections. My father was born and brought up in Vienna. I was born and brought up in Beckenham, which is rather different in South London. Um, and I guess I'm going to make no apologies for being very, very pro-European tonight, because for me, it's my family history in a way. It kind of encapsulates the story of the, of the last century. People moving from country to country. My grandfather was a farm worker in Shepherd, which is a village um, just outside Cambridge. Some of you have gone through it on the railway line, probably quite frequently. Um, he was a working class agricultural worker. He was self-taught. And it's part of the story of the last century, I guess, the, the social mobility. He used to sit outside King's College reading his paperback books. No chance that a working class man would get into an institution like this. So when I, I got into Cambridge, and my mum was so pleased and so proud, she chose it, I guess, rather than me in many ways. But a huge change for my family in the last century. And for my father, his family, um, a, so a story so familiar to so many people, I suspect, of being displaced by war and actually finding a home in Britain. And that's why the European Union seems to me to be just so, so important. Leave aside all the arguments about the bureaucracy and the rules, peace. Peace is really worth having. And anybody who's been through it, any, any experience different to that, I think we've always put that perhaps at the top. So there'll be some who'll say, well, it wasn't the European Union that kept the peace, but actually, I was a historian here, and I think we look back, and that's exactly why it was born. And I think we're in a much better place now than we were in the last century. But of course, at the moment, huge stresses and strains. But I say, I'm unashamedly pro-European. In my professional career, I've worked in the public sector, private sector. I now work for National Trade Union. I'm a negotiator, and I think that's what the European Union's about, and we'll go on to, to that in a minute. But I'm actually quite proud of the way Europe, Europe functions. I think trade-offs between nations, between interests, how much better to do it through arguing in a democratic forum than fighting one another. So that's me. I look forward to your questions. And this is the 30th of 30 Pustings events. So it's, it's, the, it's the finish line, which is why I guess we're all looking possibly a touch happy and relieved. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Rupert Reid. I'm the Green Party candidate in this election. Delighted to be here this evening. As Daniel says, this is the last one. This is your last chance to interrogate us all like this. It's been a long campaign, and on Thursday it will be over. In this seat in Cambridge, some of you may be thinking, yes, I'm not sure who to vote for. I hope some of you are still thinking, still not sure who to vote for. But there's something to play for. And if you are thinking that, you might be thinking, well, yes, you know, the Labour candidate's got quite a lot to offer. Then again, the incumbent MP has uh, 
not done a bad job, but you know, I don't want to slag my fellow candidates off. I've been impressed with them by and large in the course of this campaign. And I'm, I don't envy you the choice that you've got to make. So say you're tossing up between Labour and Lib Dem, Labour and Lib Dem. There's another way. There is another way you can vote here in Cambridge. This was our third strongest seat at the last general election. I was your candidate for MEP in the European elections here last year. We got 20% in Cambridge. Since then, we've had the green surge. We've moved forward in the polls. We've grown enormously as a party. We're strong in this seat and we're on the up. More importantly still, the things that we stand for, I bet, are the things that many of you stand for. Did you know that when people do blind tests on sites like Vote Match, Vote for Policies, the Green Party need always comes up top? People say, oh, wow, well, turns out I'm a Green Party voter. Why? Well, because we have the right policies, dare I say it, on so many things. On everything from dangerous climate change to foreign aid. On everything from, more locally, making serious provision for public transport and person-powered uh, um, transport to uh, protecting the Green Belt and ensuring that the character of Cambridge is not destroyed by the expansion that is impending. If you believe in what we believe in, I would urge you this Thursday to vote for what you believe in. You can try tossing up between the others, or you can vote for something that's actually going to be different. The only party that's going to make a difference to business as usual. I'm finding on the doorstep absolutely no enthusiasm for any of the old parties. The one party that is on the up is the Green Party. <coughs> if I convince you in what we're about to hear in the next hour and a quarter or so, please do the right thing. Vote Green on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and well done for organising uh, this hustings. Uh, I'm relieved, actually, that it's the last hustings. I've been out campaigning on the doorstep today, so I feel um, it's nice to just relax a little bit and uh, talk to more people than just one person every doorstep you go to. My name is Chamali Fernando, and I'm 36 years old. I've been at the bar uh, of the Middle Temple as a barrister for 12 years, representing people from all walks of life, sometimes those in, who are the most vulnerable in our society, facing jail, loss of their job, loss of their home, collapse of their business. What moves me to go into politics is the opportunity to actually help shape legislation and therefore help more people. I'm also a policy advisor to set up an international court for the environment, so I believe in international cooperation on big issues such as climate change. The other hat that I wear is an international qualification. I'm a licensed attorney for the State Bar of New York. And I believe that we have lessons to learn from some of our international partners. If you want a strong, pragmatic green voice in Parliament, you have the chance at this election with my candidacy. Cambridge is a city of pioneers in science, technology, innovation and research. We have, through the EU, secured more funding for science, and that has been driven into places like Cambridge. This is the global seat of learning, yet for too long Cambridge has been inward-looking. This is your chance to elect an MP who has a, has a greater vision for Cambridge, an MP with an international outlook. Now, of course, 12 years as a barrister, representing people in ordinary, everyday situations, I am not going to forget my bread and butter, which comes so naturally to me. But this is our chance to make Cambridge the global benchmark for a greener, fairer, more sustainable society. And there's three ways that I'm looking to achieve that objective. First of all, I need your vote to get into Parliament. Secondly, improving quality of life for everyone, championing welfare for those in need, supporting young families and children creating job opportunities and building that green affair of sustainable society. It's possible the will of the people here in Cambridge makes this such an attractive seat in terms of our political opportunities. So come with me, ladies and gentlemen, on this journey. The 7th of May, it's not long, but the opportunity is ours. Please take it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm Julian Hupp, and it's been a huge pleasure to serve as the Member of Parliament here for the last five years. And as others have said, this is the last of our 30 or so hustings. Uh, we've been on tour together for a long time. We could probably do each other's uh, songs now. Um, and we've talked about lots of things. I've talked about getting more money in for schools, for the NHS, particularly mental health. I've talked about housing and transport. 
And I've talked about values, and it's that which I really want to talk about now. And I've always identified four key values for me. Um, and they come very much from my upbringing. Uh, both my fa parents originally came from Europe. Uh, my mother was born in a refugee camp in Uzbekistan, which I guess makes you always have an internationalist outlook. So I'm a liberal. I want to empower people. I'm an environmentalist, so I've championed a strong response to climate change. I'm also committed to social justice, helping to lift people up out of poverty and collect more from the wealthier. But that idea of being an internationalist is really what I want to talk about today, because it is so important and too rare. And it's what got me into politics. I originally got involved in the United Nations through something called Model United Nations. Some of you may have come across it. A way of thinking about what's happening in the world, human rights issues around the world. I also got very interested then in international aid and what we do to help other countries. We as a country set a target in 1970 saying we made a promise that we would spend 0.7% of our gross national income on international aid. We promised it and then we never bothered to do it. 43 years later we finally got round to it in this government. And I was very proud to co-sponsor the legislation that now makes it the law that we must spend 0.7% on other countries. It's too important not to do. And I'm a passionate pro-European. I'm really passionate about Europe. I even live in Europe, right here. <laughs> and it matters. And it matters. Because there are huge international issues which we simply can't challenge on our own. There's lots we can do, but working with others is much more powerful. If you want to talk about climate change, you can do much more working with others. If you want to talk about cross-border crime, international terrorism, working with Europe, European arrest warrant and other things matters. We could bring back the London bomber, Hussein Osman, in just two months rather than waiting for years. And it matters for our economy. The vast majority of businesses want us to stay. Confederation of British Industry says it's about £70 billion a year it brings to our economy, £3,000 per household. It matters for science and research. It helps this university to function. There's human movement, allowing people to go from here to there and there to here, students to come and study, Erasmus, all of that is because of the European Union. And of course, there's peace. Is it perfect? No. It's far from perfect. But I'm pro-Westminster, and Westminster's certainly not perfect either. There's much we could improve. We could stop travelling between two different sites. We could stop the policy laundering, where countries force policies through the European Union because they're too scared to do them themselves. But the challenge we face now is the rise of UKIP, which has opened up the space for xenophobia, for people to blame foreigners, blame Europeans for everything that's going wrong. And we must stand firm. I'm proud that Nick Clegg did so last year, the only party leader to actually take on Nigel Farage for those European election debates. We didn't win the elections, but we changed the mindset, and people are now more pro-European than they were. So I'm proudly internationalist, proudly pro-European, and I look forward to taking your questions.